Hello and welcome to Motoring First. Today we are going to be talking about a motorcycle, but before we go there, I want to talk about something else. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. I want to talk about the first time I got my RS Tai Chi jacket. Okay, why? Because I abs- it was my first expensive jacket. Yeah, and you loved that jacket, that I remember. And when I came back, we got it in Thailand. Mm-hmm. We'd gone for, I think, the Monster 795 ride, if Correct. I'm not wrong. And we came back from the ride and straight away the event that we went for hmm. was the Pulsar 200 NS. Really? Was it the 200 NS or the NS 200? Oh, that's a because good question. Because they're both different Correct. bikes. Correct. They've done it both ways. Yes. yes. So the first bike was the 200 NS. NS. And then I think in 2017, yeah, it, it came became, back post and it became the NS 200. Yeah, NS 200. So the reason I've started with that is because I do have a point. I bought that jacket 12 years ago. It's been 12 years since I got that jacket. I'm really impressed that your calendar is running based on motorcycle gear. I think that's awesome. <laughs> so a paper printed calendar is so boring when you can calculate by that jacket, this glove, those boots, that helmet. Exactly. I love it. That's exactly how I remember it. Because then I was just going through the loop. When I got the Dainese suit, it was RS200 time. <laughs> so... <laughs> Bajaj is uh, launching, I think, the larger Pulsar in May or something like that. Time to get you, buy yeah. some gear. <laughs> <laughs> and my jacket is ratty, torn, destroyed. It's still usable, but it's done. Hmm. What's the story with the NS? Um, it's not ratty, torn in any of these things, but it's the same bike, more or less. Tell me so. I mean, seriously. I mean, seriously. The... Amazing thing about the NS200 is that if you remember, it was the first of the KTM 200cc engine joint development. Yes. Uh, It had the triple spark four valve engine to the point where I once got screamed at because I asked somebody saying, when are you putting the fourth (laughs) spark plug in the engine? People got really upset until I said, until I had to say, but I'm serious. You said two was better than one and you did two and now you've done three. So logically you'll do four. You can't drill that many holes in an engine. (laughs) <laughs> so, uh, what they've done now, I think Bajaj has been really reluctant about updating the NS200 at all, if you think about it, right? So, the NS from 2000... Can I, can I just do a flashback, small sure, flashback? Sure, sure, yeah. sure. Now, the correlation between the jacket and the bike also is that they were both really exciting, right? Yeah. The NS200 for that time was the new breed of pulses, yeah. right? The modern, like Shumi said, you know, the engines borrowed from the KTMs with the new perimeter frames, new level of performance. And this was all to outdo their previous champion, which was the yeah. 220F. Correct. So this was supposed to be the modern take from Bajaj, the mm. new lease of life for pulses. Yeah, and I'm very scared that we'll keep bringing up more and more pulses in this story and there's too many of them anyway. So you will probably fully confused by the end. But so the bike came out. And I remember it being a really spectacular Pulsar in many ways. But despite the popularity, despite the longevity, if you look at the number of things that have changed over the years for the NS200, that list won't, you you couldn't like fill a finger with that list. Right? Now, when this bike started becoming popular internationally, like for example, there was a point where the NS200 had come to a very low sales number in India. But it continued to sell primarily because it was so popular in Turkey that Bajaj couldn't shut the production. There was no point. Oh. And if you look at how Bajaj phrases the arrival of the upside down folk, which happened a couple of years ago, it looks like Brazil needed it. Right. And therefore, everybody got it. Right. And remember, in Brazil, if you're not watching in India, this bike is called the Dominar in multiple markets. So it'll appear as the Dominar 200 in Brazil, etc. Here we call it the NS200. So Brazil required the USD folks. And which is why we got it also because then Bajaj had to split production, right? Do we give the Correct. RSUs, uh, right side up folks to India? And do we give USDs, upside down folks to Brazil? They said, no, we'll just do it in one place. So we got the upside down folks, right? Now, they've finally given it LED headlights. Okay. They've given it a simple clutch. Okay. And they've added one technology item which everybody seems to shop for and then nobody intends to use right after. So this bike also now has Bluetooth and connectivity and uh, turn-by-turn navigation. 
It's like connected car tech in cars. Yeah. It's there. No, in fact, uh, I remember speaking to somebody from Hero offline when we were at the, um, not the Vida. I think the Extreme 125R. Okay. And I was asking how critical is this? No, uh, Extreme uh, 4V, the 160R mm. 4V. Mm. And I was like, how critical is this connectivity thing? Mm. So this is the strange thing is, every customer wants it in their bike as a hygiene item when they're purchasing right. it. And they have no intention of using it right after that. Right. Okay, so I cannot buy it if it doesn't have Bluetooth. But do you plan to use the Bluetooth? <laughs> yeah, no, I don't plan to use the yeah. Bluetooth. Right? Correct. So there are multiple FAQs that you'll find where we said the problem with the pulses today is they don't have Bluetooth. And a lot of people misinterpreted that as saying, we think you should have Bluetooth on your bike. Mm -hmm. No, you think you should have Bluetooth on your bike. So it is important for us to point out that this is a missing item. And now you'll see over the course of this year, every single one of those 10 pulsers that are on sale today will probably get connected. Okay. So, uh, I can already tell you, Scoop exclusive NS400 will have Bluetooth. <laughs> so, the NS400 is going to come with Bluetooth. For sure. I, I'm thinking. And LED headlamps. Uh, uh, yeah. And slipper clutch. At least. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Okay, can we talk about this bike? Um, uh, we are done. I'm, I'm... Okay, look, in hardware terms, we are done. Okay, this is the same bike as before, still makes just under 25 bhp as it used to, still has that triple spark engine, Has makes all of those noises. Uh, and uh, I tried the headlamp, it is a nice, I'm not going to say super powerful headlamp, but it's an effective head headlamp. Uh, the new digital console is kind of tightly packed. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit difficult to parse, especially left outer edge to the top because it starts like a fuel gauge and then runs into the RPM counter. So it, it's a little difficult to read and the numbers are really small. So a 50 year old riding the bike finds it difficult to read these numbers. <laughs> and then as happens with the Bluetooth screens today, the right side of the screen is khali until you connect your phone and there's actually something to display there, right? Okay. It's just empty. Okay. So uh, they've added a lot more information back. They've not made the mistake of, for example, removing the clock or something. All the basics are still there. Okay. Uh, the one complication which I haven't figured out honestly is there's an M button on the left switch cube and the M and the S button on the meters. Hmm. So the M and S do what the M and S do, right? You press the M, it changes the thing, you set it, whatever. I don't know what this does yet. So I am assuming it has something to do with Bluetooth. Oh, but I okay. don't know why it is labeled as a mode button because there are no riding modes or any such thing. Ah, that's what I asked you. Does it have riding no, modes? No, nothing. Because this, I saw that button. Yeah. So that button, I think, is only once the app is connected to reject calls, accept calls or something like that. I'm sorry if you're disappointing the Zennials or the Millennials or whatever it's at right now by not talking about connectivity tech, but too bad. Yeah, if you know how a phone works, that's how the phone works. <laughs> you cannot scroll your Instagram, that is okay. And if you need to check WhatsApp messages on your machine, then you must get an Aether Rista, I believe. <laughs> Why you would check your WhatsApp on your scooter? How critical can WhatsApp... Wait, wait, rewind what? I'm sorry. We'll discuss this on the Rista thing properly, but they've integrated WhatsApp into their dash, so you can see the notifications. No. Oh. Yeah, so when your family group sends the good morning messages by the 800 million, you can get all of those notifications clogging oh, your dash. Man. I know, uh, look, utility wise, it's probably a good idea, but in terms of usability and the riding experience, I'm not sure connecting more and more things to your dash is such a great idea. How? Yeah. No. Yeah. No. So the only logical thing about this is, I think Karthik said on the Nexon EV that electric vehicles having these things may actually make sense because while you're charging, you've got to do something. Yeah. Let's not do this to two-wheelers, <laughs> oh, please, God, gone, please. Listen, listen, we've gone so far from the NS200, we should return. You know what I was surprised about today, but I put about 210 kilometers on the bike. Yes. I really enjoyed riding the bike. So it's still good to ride. It's still so good to ride that I am frustrated that Bajaj won't update this motorcycle further. You know why? Uh -huh. It's like, if you see the N250, the new N250 is coming out next week. So I'm still referring to the current N250. Okay. Yeah. The N250 and the NS200, if you stand them next to each other, you will not be able to decide what is Bajaj's quality level. Because the NS is old. Right. And the N250 is new. Right. The N250 is a much higher quality motorcycle than the NS200. Right. But they're both in regular production today. So is Bajaj a high quality manufacturer or not? So where are the differences so obvious? Like... They haven't done anything to the NS200 at all, Karthik. So it came out. So it in, just looks old. Yeah. So it came out in what, 2012? And then there was an update in 2017. We are now in 2024. In the last two years, Bajaj has produced some extraordinarily high quality product compared to what they were at. Hmm. Look at the Chetak right now. Right. 
right? Look at the N250. Oh, these bikes are in very good shape. They look like high co- higher quality products. NS200 does not. It looks like an older Bajaj. It's as if Bajaj is selling you a vintage motorcycle from one of their showrooms. Uh, so just to give you a, the, the worst example of it, and this is the worst example of it. The rest of the bike is better than this. If you look at the rear seat, hmm. the rear seat goes into a tray. Correct. This tray is not part of the side panel. It's inside. Correct. So there's like a bunch of creases and lips in there. When you wash this bike, when this bike gets dirty, water goes in. Water accumulates in places. Residue happens. Stuff will go in there. You know how if you have sliding windows in your house, there are channels that are impossible to clean, and then you have to call the urban clap guy with the deep cleaning kit to clean it. This bike has those channels built in, and Bajaj knows better today. But the NS two hundred doesn't get the benefit of that. Did 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 the NS two hundred get to the status of the two twenty F? Because that I remember was the pain. It does have a following. Okay. It so is does. it is it yesterday once more in that sense that the two fifties have come, but the no. See, Karthik, if I were to buy a two twenty F today, I am very clear that I am buying an outdated motorcycle that has been outperformed left, right, and center by competition. It just happens to still have a very powerful Correct. name and a very loyal. This bike doesn't feel like it has been outperformed that comprehensively. It's still relevant. which is why if they were to update the ns200 consciously and seriously i think there is a whole new bunch of customers who will come and find it very powerful very easy to ride very pleasant so and okay it's a nice bike around the corners too so if i remember what i remember of the ns was that it's got that 200 engine yes which means it was quick it loves yes. it it enjoyed and, being and revved it, and it enjoys the revs yeah, they yeah. added 1 newton meter of torque somewhere along the way so it's not dead below and then alive correct it's a reasonably pleasant and reasonably quick motorcycle to ride even in city traffic you don't have to rev it all the way out correct. the more you rev it out the more rewarding it feels and the audio amps up really nicely mm. i really enjoyed listening to it mm. it has that typical bajaj tone from that era it's yeah. it's not something the bajajes do anymore yeah. and it sounds good it sounds in character and it sounds honest mm. so i was climbing the uh, ghat up to uh, lonavla from khopoli it was empty there was nobody there right so i was basically opening the throttle a lot more than i normally would i loved listening to it mm. like a old school single revving out the the multi spark sound oh very nice very nice but it it had that nice feel about it you know yes. like you enjoyed riding it still like you're does. saying still refined the gear shifts are buttery light yeah. the clutch has become lighter because they added a silver clutch along the way right uh, and in the city whatever little traffic like yesterday on the way back there was some amount of traffic it used to have some weightiness right uh, it has more weight on the front than usual but the weight uh, is actually 4951 it's not actually a front heavy motorcycle hmm. okay so uh, now it's also along the way received the lighter wheels from the N250. They are one and a half kilos lighter than before. So what you remember was a heavier unsprung mass motorcycle. Right. This one is lighter. Okay. So I have no memory of putting effort into the steering of the. I was just messing with it and playing with it oh, and nice. it was responding very nicely. So there is that old, very good handling. And it would package. handle well as well. Yeah, I remember riding back to back. We were filming uh, me and Abhay. Abhay is now at Turbo Charged, and uh, he was on the Duke and I was on the NS200 on the last corner of Curry mm. and uh, doing illegal things because we we're just taking pictures, but going backwards and forwards. Mm. And I distinctly remember that I had to put more work into the NS, mm. and then you'd feel a springiness in the frame before it turned. Mm. And if you did the same on the KTM200, you would just, just turn. It was the first time I clearly noticed how. But the mm. stiffness of a chassis makes a difference to how you Correct. feel about it right right so all that goodness is still there right when you see the perimeter frame in the dominar i feel physically bad mm. but when i see that perimeter on the ns200 and the weight connects with the engine and connects all the dots it really does work so i am very happy to have ridden this bike i am not so happy to recommend this bike because this bike is a little bit outdated what would you like to see changed for it to feel I would fresh like it to be updated to the modern day the how a bike handles mm. our expectations have moved on a little bit it needs a tweak mm. to update to that how suspension should handle a big bump a small bump and a sporty corner etc we've gained a let's say a higher level of sophistication and i'm not saying it has to go up multiple price points at very similar price points i'd like that sophistication to come to this pulsar okay we've got brakes that are much uh, more feedback rich i'm not going to say sharper I'd like to see that feedback on this motorcycle. Okay. You know, the riding position is now feeling a little older. We know a little bit more about how we sit. I'd like those tweaks to come and then of course quality. I would like modern switchgear. I would like modern body panels even if it's the same design. Can we get it to be neater and cleaner and all of that kind of thing?
so that's one of the things i remember the about the ns that uh, you sit kind of on top of it it's got a slightly Correct. higher set seating position which to me feels like a like a old school thing now yeah, right it, it doesn't does. feel like it a does. modern yeah, bike exactly it does that way it does i was looking at the gopro footage when i came back in and it looks like i'm shooting from quite the far up right whereas if you look at the footage of the current uh, um duke 390 even the recent n250 mm. it's like the angle is a lot lower and you're mm. looking at the screen rather Correct. than from on top it's not it's down here like yeah, almost exactly right? yeah. but there is so much niceness in this bike that if this bike were to retire i would actually feel sad right. and oh, i'm not suggesting is going to retire i'm saying there's so much potential here for bajaj to explore but it i mean they've done several upgrades but it's never gone to new generation no has it no right no so in theory you are riding a bike that was invented in 2012 yeah. in 2024 and that's just it like when we are discussing it the memories are rich of what the bike is and why you enjoyed it but it's just off my radar correct so today what happens is when somebody dms me saying should i buy an ns200 so far i have been in two minds should i huh. recommend an ns200 now i know exactly what to recommend it for what are the reasons to get one but i don't oh, think one second it's a really nice motorcycle to ride but why won't you get a 250 no, no, no. or 2 i'm saying if you were in the zone for an ns200 i can see the reasons why you would get one i am not saying that's the best choice you can make so what you're saying is if you want to buy an ns200 yeah, i won't stop you you can yeah, but like there are you better to, options yeah yeah if you were to say rs200 i would stop you i would say yeah, yeah, i don't Understood. know the rs200 yeah. right it will rattle it will have a thousand yeah. other things just get the ns instead you'll get a very similar experience correct but if you were to saying should i get an ns yes you should but what are my options all the options will outperform the ns mm. right is, is price heavily skewed on its side i mean no, is it is uh, 130000 rupees odd ex showroom it's not too expensive okay and the and the duke 200 would be how much now uh 212 oh yeah so 205x uh, uh, roughly 2 lakhs was it roughly 1 lakh 30 wow so right? value wise there is a yeah yeah that's what i'm saying it's a really nice motorcycle to ride i am not objecting to the price it still returns 35 kilometers per liter it's not a slow motorcycle mm. but when you add up to what else is available in the market everything is fresher and newer so who would be the direct rivals this is not duke is let's say the closest that has ever been a constant is the rtr 200 which is a massively great bike and that is a well rounded motorcycle it has torque it has power i think now it gets preload adjustable front Correct. and rear yeah. suspension Achha, rear uh, yeah it also has bluetooth if that's important it is not <laughs> so if you <laughs> <laughs> it is not <laughs> if you add it up like that the <laughs> rtr 200 is the motorcycle that probably outsells the ns 200 by a lot Hmm. But TVS did update that motorcycle quite a bit and rounded out the package, added equipment, and they, in that sense, they took it a lot more seriously. Hmm. I can't say that Bajaj has taken the NS two hundred that seriously. They hmm. didn't do anything to it. Correct, because as soon as I think about the RTR two hundred, I just think of it as a more modern motorcycle. That's right? it. I'm not directly thinking, oh, it's a much better motorcycle, but Correct. I'm thinking of it as a more modern motorcycle. Exactly, and therefore a little bit higher in my yeah. So headspace. So my frustration about the NS two hundred is that. It's like I can see that there's a great motorcycle here, yeah. and if you were to update it, keep the value equation roughly where it is, this is going to make a lot of riders very happy. And to me, that is a bigger goal than it will sell a lot of numbers. Mm. If riders are happy, they will continue to buy motorcycles and stay motorcyclists for a long time in a country where everybody is in a journey to get to their first car. Right? We have to retain these motorcyclists. If you have to look at the big picture in the long term, Bajaj will make cars a lot later than you will buy your first car. But what a great ride! That's such a good fun. nobody outside a good motorcycle and it's not like for us anymore it's not super super fast anymore it's it's fun right so you're on, you're never feeling like i'm on the edge or i'm pushing my luck mm. it's just oh this is so cute you know it's so much fun i loved it yeah, what a great <laughs> this is so cute yeah. <laughs> for a pulsa it's terrible yeah so think about it right in 2012 when we rode this bike it was like oh my god how much yeah. power and all of that yeah. right and and there's a that's the point i'm making yeah. i have ridden continuously since then till today in those 12 years i have come a long way and yes bajaj will immediately turn around and say you're not the target customer right. but i'm saying if i evolved say 100 units should this motorcycle not evolve at least 20 25 units that's the problem. no no i think there's a more uh, going back to my jacket question jacket <laughs> um, starting point i have worn out my arstai chi jacket yeah right but i have enjoyed it so much correct. that whenever i think of getting another jacket right i know that will be my default correct 
right? I feel that the NS agree, agreed, like, you know, that I wouldn't look to buy another NS today, hmm. right? I'd want another Pulsar, another flagship from the family. But this, I should at least be looking back at it and saying, that's a good place to be, Correct. right? And there'll be new people who'll be going for that yeah. and will enjoy being on it. Yeah, and right? I'm still telling you, uh, the NS... Uh, 160 and the 200, for example, does pretty well down south hmm. in India. The, a lot of sales are focused uh, in, in those markets. And if those markets were to get an updated NS, hmm. I don't know that the sales will go down. Hmm. And if you think about the guys who did buy the NS 200 so many years along the way, they have never been allowed to upgrade within the Bajaj family at all because the Dominar can't hold a candle to this bike. Right now, finally, this year we'll get the NS400, and finally, there will be an NS branded motorcycle that carries that idea forward. Right? But Bajaj actually went the other way first, right? They did NS125, and did NS160, then NS200. We, are, we should probably consider ourselves lucky that there is no NS150. <laughs> there is no. <laughs> what? what the, that's what they did with the N pulses, remember? There's no NS150? No, 160 only. Oh, opportunity. There never was? No. Really? No. Oh, okay. 125, 160, 200, and now 400. Then the N series has uh, N150, N160. Is there an N125? Uh, will you leave, leave me a comment and tell me if there's an N125? I can't remember at this time. <laughs> N150, N160, N250. <laughs> Then there was the F250 which failed, so they retired it. Uh, F was not for failure, F was for fairing, just to make sure that you know this clearly. Then there was the P150, which also retired because it looked like the Discover. Do you remember the P150 when it was here? Which P150? The P150 and the N150. Uh, okay, N not the Pulsar 150 as such, but the P150. Pulsar P150. Oh, yeah, okay. What, you remember yeah, the bike? Okay. Yeah, so the P150. We what came for the ride together. Yeah. What, so yeah. the P150 also didn't do so well. That's been retired and now that's become the N150 with the styling from the N160. I mean, what's going on? Dude. In all of this, the NS200 is easily the most identifiable of these motorcycles. You know, that's an excellent. Excellent point. When Shumi said we were going to have this conversation, I was like, I don't even know where to start, yeah. to be honest. Because I don't know what this motorcycle stands for anymore and to whom it still feels like, you know, a pulser by default is meant to make you sit up, take notice and be like, be excited about it by default. Yeah. Like in the Pulsar brand is a very interesting brand, right? Today I was reading the history of the Pulsar in prep for this episode, right? And I remember that, uh, and obviously the definitely male campaign comes out. Can you imagine running the definitely male campaign in 2024? Whoa. We might have opened a can of worms there. I mean, at the end of the day, we should be open to all takes, right? So yeah. If that's their take. We should leave take. advertising to the amateurs <laughs> to quote another Bajaj ad, I think. Woke up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> going going back to the NS, uh, my my I was really wondering like where does this motorcycle fit in now? Now that the uh, I think Bajaj doesn't ever think about it like that. No, which is the flagship? Is the N two fifty yet? Oh heck, I don't know. I don't know what the flagship is because the N two fifty is a naked. No no, hang on hang on. A flagship means your best product. Yes. Representative of your highest quality levels, representative yes. of your highest technology levels, yes. representative of your highest sensitivity to what a rider's experience should be. Yes. I don't know which of the Bajajas does this. I was not wowed by the N250 or the new 250s. I'm saying I don't know which Bajaj does this. It can't be the Domina 400. That's a flawed motorcycle from the start. It's a flawed riding experience from the beginning. They haven't fixed it. So it can't be the flagship by these criteria, right? right? In terms of tech, the N series pulsers are not high tech pulsers. They are very well made pulsers for a very narrow job, which is commute well. Mm. And they do a few associated things reasonably well, but they're primary a very good commuter now and comfortable, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Does that represent peak technology? No. Good rider experience? Yes, but a very low, rev uh, a low end rider experience. So does Pachaj currently have a flagship? Low-end rider experience, I think what Shumi is saying is that it's not that high-performance yeah, kind yeah, of Yeah, low-end in the sense of not complicated. It's very accessible. Yeah, not complicated. Like not anybody complicated. can get onto it, enjoy that kind of performance and be done. Yeah, so building a reasonably versatile motorcycle is far less complex than building a sports bike that represents your ability to make a sports bike. That is the complication I'm talking about. So this to me, therefore, is a higher-end or more abstract pursuit and this is a lower end and less abstract pursuit is what I mean. Not low-end as in commuters are terrible, right? So if you look at the definition of what a flagship stands for, 
I can't identify a Bajaj bike that represents a flagship for the brand. Uh, not today. Maybe the NS two four hundred's job is to come and occupy that position. Mm -hmm. Do they have a, something that they can call a flagship today? No, I don't think so. Okay. I mean, I would end up at KTM to say, oh, here's a flagship, because mm -hmm. the three ninety is all that. Correct. Right. The Scrambler four hundred X for Triumph in that in this. Uh, playing field, it's all that. Correct. The Aprilia RSV4 by miles is their flagship and it represents all that. RS457. 457, 457 sorry. sorry. And, but NS? No. Ns? No. Ps? No. <laughs> Ds? No. None of these bikes. <laughs> so, uh, this is going to be a short episode because honestly, we wanted to discuss the context of the NS and I wanted to vent my frustrations that Bajaj hasn't done more with this motorcycle. And hopefully the NS400 will fix a lot of this. And uh, I don't think they're going to update the NS200, at least at that point. But I'm hoping between your feedback on this episode, between what Bajaj will hear as a consequence of the NS400 arriving from other people, maybe they'll pay a lot more attention to the NS200 and bring it up to speed. So basically, we've spoken about the NS200 because of a recent update that it's got, which is basically a new headlamp that Shumi thought was Bright, but not like wow bright. But hey, we're into quick summary already. Oh, oh, awesome. Let's do it. No, no, no. Okay. No, last time you guys forgot to rate his quick summary on the RTR 310. So this time, don't forget to rate his summary. And <laughs> Karthik, three, two, one, quick summary. Okay. Uh, this episode about the Bajaj Pulsar NS200 is uh, has been triggered by it receiving a new LED headlamp. Trigger warning. Tr trigger warning. And You're not supposed to use the word trigger anymore, okay? Oh, really? It represents a very specific thing. Oh, sorry. Trigger warning. Okay. <laughs> NS200, which has basically got a new headlamp, which is LED, and um, it gets a new instrument console, which is basically yeah. sitting in the same layout. So More it's a little slim and tight, but what it's got is Bluetooth connectivity hmm. with uh, navigation. Uh, turn by turn. Turn by turn navigation, basically. Um, aside from that, there are no mechanical changes to the vehicle. Uh, it's still got the slipper same. clutch. That's the only reason. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's got a slipper clutch now because of which the clutch is also lighter. Hmm. Um, performance is the same. The chassis is the same. It's got wheels from the Pulsar and the N250, N250 which are lighter by one and a half kilograms, That's the right. set. So that reduces some of the weight that you felt earlier on the motorcycle. When Shumi rode it, it reminded him exactly why we thought uh, so highly of the NS when it came out because it's a fun, fizzy motorcycle with enough refinement, enough grunt to make it great for everyday use and yet be satisfying and rewarding when you're in that slightly speed junkie mode. Yep, absolutely. And uh, the handling of it was always strong. It was confident. It was uh, not the lightest motorcycle, not the most precise when you compare it to its own sibling on with which it Correct. is related, but it's a high standard nonetheless. And it still feels that way today. It's just that it's been around for 12 years. And uh, in those 12 years, it has got several updates to meet emission norms and uh, safety requirements and things like that. And some small mild refreshes like with the headlamp now but it has done very little to make the product feel fresh Correct. so today if it's not in your uh, in your worldview of motorcycles to buy it's because of that lack of freshness not because it's not a good motorcycle and uh, excellent it's, right excellent summary and its value quotient is thank you hmm. its value quotient is Excellent as well, right? At a, it's a liquid cooled four valve, two hundred cc, three three spark plugs, and three three spark plugs compared to the RTR two hundred, which is not liquid cooled, uh, not as high tech as it were in terms of the architecture. But the RTR two hundred is the direct rival. It is also competitively priced. It gets better hardware in terms of the suspension Correct. now, uh, which makes it feel more modern and more plush, which is one of the shortcomings that Shumi felt on the NS today, uh, that yep. it should have had more plush suspension, better able to deal with more things, Correct. with more finesse. The seating position needs to be altered a bit. The equipment on offer, the switch gear can all be improved to become a new generation and carry on the legacy of the NS to a new audience who can and should appreciate it. That's it. That's the story. But I'm honestly telling you, I don't think that the NS200 is on your radar and that's fine. 
if you have a chance to ride one, you should ride one. There is something really, really nice and really old school about this motorcycle. In fact, there's a story that you won't see on YouTube because there's no point in releasing it anymore. We filmed it, we got it ready and then uh -huh. the update came. We did NS160, the view story. And I actually called it the world's first retro, uh, retro sport naked, I think. <laughs> retro sport naked. Yeah, okay. because when I rode it, it sounds like the DTSI sound. You remember the yeah, DTSI yeah, sound? It has yeah. that sound. Okay, I'm sorry the youngsters may not know this, but those engines with the twin spark plug had a very distinct sound to it, right? It had that sound. It had that feeling. Hmm. And it felt old, hmm. right? So when I left the office, my first feeling was, oh my God, it's going to be a, like a boring day, right? right? And the more I rode, the more I enjoyed myself because I actually felt like I had rewound the world <laughs> and I was riding in another time. It didn't I feel it. like... Yeah. The motorcycle was out of place. It right. felt like it took me to a different took, place. Yeah, I know. Which exactly is a very powerful mean. thing for yeah, a motorcycle to yeah, be able to pull yeah. off. So, would I tell you to buy the NS160? Oh, no, absolutely not. But is there an experience in there that <laughs> I think you should just get a taste of once? Yes, absolutely, you should. So, I have those feelings about the NS200 too. And I don't think these need to exist as time machines that reference the past. I right. think there is no reason why Bajaj shouldn't move these forward. The only caveat there. I've always said this, I will continue to say this, Bajaj has way too many pulsars on sale. This product line needs to be clarified further. No, I mean, we've just had a conversation saying that we do not understand which is the flagship and we are not even going by price or displacement, yeah. just by what would characterize a flagship. Correct. And between the two of us, we don't know. Yeah. We may not have a clue. If you do, yeah, hit us up. Exactly. So... Uh, it's a very nice bike to ride though, I must say. <laughs> I was so happy to ride it today. So, bit of a blast from the... <laughs> you know, you're right. It is a blast from the past blast in so many ways. For me. A very nice blast. <laughs> blast from the past. <laughs> it is a very nice blast from the past for sure. <laughs> blast from the past. Blast. <laughs> yeah. Blast. Uh -huh. Okay. So, uh, do you have anything that you'd like to ask before we wrap this up? The 200 Duke got any updates to the engine? Uh, we are waiting for the updates to come. The 399 engine came to the Duke, hmm. but that's the only update that has happened so far. 250 got an update as well. 250 got an update in the process because if you remember, the family split into two parts. Hmm. The 250 and the 390 are the same base and yeah. the lower bikes are a different base. So the updates for the different base has not been seen okay. yet. So we it's don't expected. Know. Yeah, we don't know what is going to happen because uh, by the time they get to the 200, 125, then Bajaj, KTM don't always see eye to eye on which bikes go where and what spec goes where and they'll get the LED headlight, but we won't get it and all that drama starts, right? So I don't know where we are at with the 125 and the 200 yet. So next, what we are looking for is from Bajaj is, uh, you will see the N250 motoring first within the next couple of weeks. That's going to happen very shortly. I'm riding the bike in a couple of days from now. Can we know what it will be about? I, I think it's a small update, just like this one. So it will be a really short episode. We'll see what the updates are about. Uh, the bike did reasonably okay and then the sales tailed off. They have to update that bike. That's one. Uh, we will uh, see Bajaj do the Bruiser, which is a uh, Bruiser. I don't know the actual name, which is supposed to be the CNG motorcycle. We'll see that middle of the year. We'll see the NS400 around the middle of the year also. Okay. And... Uh, They've been strangely silent on the Avenger, but I think that's because they're not doing anything with the Avenger. They've also been strangely silent on the Dominar, which I think needs a grounds up, think about what this motorcycle is for kind of refresh. And I think it's just been alone for too long. If it had to be a family, if it had to be a nameplate on its own, hmm. it needed... No, but see, the Dominar didn't do well ever from the start. Right. Which is why Bajaj being the kind of organization, they'd focus on where the success is and make sure that that is continuing to work. And it has worked as a reasonably good strategy for them in the past. Uh, so, the fact that they more or less ignored the Dominar, I'm not surprised by. Some amount of marketing work goes into it and they leave the thing alone. But I think the Dominar is the one model where they need to say, what is this motorcycle for? That question needs to be answered. It's the only motorcycle in their garage, uh, in their uh, stable where I can't really point out saying, what is the role of that motorcycle? What is it for? And if you can't answer that question, the motorcycle cannot actually come out and do a great job of anything. And I think the Dominar name in a reinvented ADV as a touring bike is perfect. You already have marketed it to the nines as a great touring bike, which it is honestly not so great. Accessible, well-priced, reasonable amount of performance, yes, but that doesn't make a good tourer. It makes a purchasable motorcycle. So if I were Bajaj, I would say, can we take the Dominar nameplate in India, not in Brazil, can we take the Dominar nameplate? and put it onto a proper design from zero ADV. Because remember, they have access to the 2025 KTM 390 Duke platform. 
I think there is a smashing, smashing Torer at an accessible price point in a Dominar 400 and then a superb KTM and then a KTM Adventure R for the hardcore guys. Do you think they should do that as a Dominar? The Dominar is a touring number plate. If they don't go down the rabbit hole that they did with the current 390 Adventure of trying to brand it as off-road friendly and all it was, and it was a tour enduro, which means it goes down the road and it can handle some amount of off-road work if it needs to. That's what an ADV needs to do in India anyway as a template. If you take that template, you're building a touring motorcycle. Bajaj owns a touring brand right now. It happens to be called the Dominar. A power cruiser in India at that kind of price point in this kind of segment makes no sense to me. It is functionally deficient. I think Dominar is a little too messy for it to become an adventure brand now. That is that is my my take. Then you have to have a new brand name. Oh. Pulsar AS400. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on that note, I think we should yeah. wrap up before we do any more damage here. <laughs> Alright, do you want to wrap this up? <laughs> I'm sorry, this one has been a little, um, little meandering and a little slow maybe. But hey, this is a conversation about a motorcycle that... Um, has been around for a long time and we know it very well. But look at how many branches the NS200 led us down. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> okay. Okay. So if you have any questions that you don't think we've answered, uh, just leave us a comment. We'll get to you. Uh, we've said this to you before. Comments are a little difficult for us. We're trying to get to as many as we can. Chances are you will get an answer. But uh, we are trying. we're trying really hard. This uh, episode will also appear on Apple, Google, Spotify and Amazon as usual. If you'd like to listen to it rather than watch it. And if there's anything else at all, please do leave us a comment anywhere on the channel. Thank you very much.